Welcome. This is the Inclusive Naming Project as part of She Code Africa Contributhon, April 2022. Today is May the 10th. Uh, let's get that in the notes. May 10th. And uh, great to have you all here. Thanks for being here. And topics that I had on my list was let's review progress to date. Uh, looking at the list of poll requests that have been assembled, et cetera, and uh, code reviews likely needed on the poll requests. Special thanks to Angelique Jard, who's been doing a number of code reviews. And then Peace and Catherine, if you have questions, we should probably put your questions first on the list because we're in the last week of, we're, uh, actually I'll put it on the list as a timeline reminder. We're in the last week of the project, so let's talk about what we've got. Um, questions and answers, timeline, review of progress, and if there are any other questions or topics on the search. Catherine or Peace, anything else you want to add onto the list? Um, will there be another meeting next week? Ah, good question, yes, and that's last week of the project but not last but not the last week of meetings yes there okay. will be good good point so let's talk about that what's next uh, what's what happens in the last two weeks in the last two weeks of may okay in the um inclusive naming um sheets i saw something like the last um um progress is um create, build, and something like that. Check in the inclusive naming sheet. That's the spreadsheet. Oh, in this one right what here? You, no, in no, this one right here. Me, so. so, sorry, piece. Which, what piece was it that we were looking for? The inclusive naming document that was sent from the beginning. Oh, so this one. Okay, uh-huh. Yes, at the last part, I saw build the last task. So the last task here, compile the plugin. Is that what you mean by last task? No, okay, submit, no, the one before submit pull request. Before, right, Request so. terminologies, not this, the, not this. I mean the last Stats. Just scroll up, you see it. Okay. Okay, this one. Revise the terminology, build plugin oh, and things plugin. Right. And I think I think this we just need to correct it because we've found the two of you have proven that in general you don't have to build the plugin in order to in order to propose a terminology change. I, I think we can just delete that text. Because you've, at least what I've seen on your pull requests, so if I look at any one of these pull requests, I don't think that this one required that you build Blue Ocean in order to check that the change was reasonable. Okay. So I, I don't think you have to build the plugin. Good, good point. Was, was that what you were asking, Peace, or did I misunderstand? Yes. Yes, that is what I'm talking about. Okay, and in fact, this is nonsense. I've got this task here is, this task is not related to inclusive naming, right? Because what we found is we, by choosing to only change things that were in Java.comments, comments, in HTML files and in um, jelly files, we've been able to avoid any requirement that you have to compile the plugins or even test them, right? It's, they are simple string manipulations in safe locations. So, so I think I, I, this should be deleted from the document because it, it doesn't help you and it won't help future projects if we do this again. Good catch, thank you. So let me put myself an action item here. Got it. Okay. 
piece, anything else, any other mistakes that you found like that? Nope. Okay. Okay. On my um on the inclusive naming sheet, mm -hmm. I there was one I indicated first. That's on the inclusive naming spreadsheet. Okay, so I'm on the inclusive naming spreadsheet and okay, it's um email ext. Okay, uh, the so name of the project. email ext. And let me find the earlier one. So Oh, you said paused, okay. Yes. Okay, when you open the plugin, we had git all. Mm -hmm. The naming, um, the, terminolo the terminology to be named on this plugin is a um, white list. Oh, okay, good. All right, so there's use of the word white list. Okay, so I saw lots of white lists. Right. It, oh, okay. It, exactly. And but now the question is, but, which of those can you actually change, and which yes. which can't you change? Right. Yes, because when I um when in that doc file, if you scroll down, you see one doc file. When you change the whitelist to allow the the English term does not it's not sounding correct again. Exactly. And, and that's been, that's been a, that's why the term, the replacement for whitelist with something else inevitably needs, it requires that we use some better phrasing. So it's, it's not a simple string replacement. It, it has to, we have to use some phrasing form that, that describes it there. You're exactly right. So this recipes.adoc file is, is the example. And here it says, okay, if we look for whitelist, filtering recipient, recipients on a whitelist on, and probably in this case, it should be on a list of allowed, on a list of allowed recipients or from a list of allowed recipients or based on a list of allowed recipients. Now let's, let's test it with the rest of the group. Okay, uh, Daniel's confronted this one in particular. Daniel, any comments from you? So we have a straightforward replacement term in allow list. However, I found that subjectively just doing the straight um, forward replacement of whitelist with a low list sometimes was not particularly helpful or it just gave the impression that you're missing some information there. So we have a straightforward one but I would recommend thinking about, well, is there a better way to phrase this to indicate what is being allowed? Excellent. So, so peace, are you, com and, and this one is a really good one for, for several pieces, like for several things like that. For instance, whitelist here means a list of allowed email recipients. This variable name, given that this is sample code actually could be replaced. And likewise, because this is sample code, this def thing could be, could be replaced. So this is one of, those, one of those conditions where because it's sample inside a document, we can actually do the replacement. Most times I, I would say, oh, it's code, don't, don't touch it because you'll break it. But in this case, you actually can use better wording to describe what, what it means. So filtering recipients based on the list of allowed user, allowed email recipients, that kind of thing. Does, does that help you with your question piece? Yes, it does. Good, very good. Because very... I was confused. I, when, if I um, delete the whitelist and write aloud, the, the phrase is not sounding correct. And I'll be like, what's going on? So that exactly. was hard to yeah, that you're you're exactly correct, and that's that's just exactly as Daniel noted that yes, we could do the simple textual replacement, but then it feels like you're missing information, right? It doesn't feel right to say allow list. It's just not telling the user what they really need to know. Very good, thank you. Um, Mark, does that uh, does that 
also apply to areas with the branch name master, where it, it's it, referring directly to the master name, uh, to the branch name. It, it, it very much does, Catherine. Yeah, good, good observation as well. So, so the, when, when documentation describes a branch name and uses the word master to describe it, we have to look at the context quite carefully and decide, is this talking about a branch that is exactly the branch name of a specific repository and that repository uses master as its convention? Or is it a reference to the primary default branch of this repository? And in that case, it could be use the term main branch or primary branch. Again, this is one to, to check in with Daniel since he's here with us. Daniel, what's your experience been on referring to the names of default branches in Git? So exactly that. So historically, Git, GitHub, and so on used master as the default branch name. And so every everyone just said master branch. And older repos still have that as the branch name. Now, the problem, as far as I'm aware, is GitHub, specifically, if you create a new repository, will use the main branch, and they kind of nudge people towards that name, even in existing repositories. But there's still a lot of repositories around that use master. And Git, the tool itself, as far as I'm aware, still uses the master name. So since there's no longer this fairly strong convention to have a master branch name and it differs on, uh, it, it, it's different on the various environments, my recommendation would be to call it the default branch as just a more generic identifier of if you mean the default branch. Now, there are two limitations here. One is, as Mark, as you said, if it's a specific repository and it has a master branch, we're going to call it the master branch if we need this level of specificity. And the other is, Mark, you will know this as the maintainer of the Git plugin. We still have not been able to migrate from the implicit default branch name master because that would break all existing configurations that rely on this being the historical default. So in that specific context that you will be able to describe much more accurately than I am, uh, it would remain master as well. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks very much. So Catherine, did, did Daniel's description give, give the answer you needed? Um, yes, it did. Excellent. It did. Thank you. Thank you. So, so good point that whitelist, blacklist, and master all have cases where we've got to, we have to think more, more deeply about what we're describing and read the text that we're using to, to fill them in more, more accurately. Very good. Excellent. And yeah, as, as Daniel said, I could tell you some horror stories about certain, certain plugins inside Jenkins that struggle mightily when people change the default branch name. It's a very reasonable thing to do. And command line Git has actually now made it an option so that you can say my default for all new Git repositories with very recent command line Git versions will be named main instead of master or default or something else, primary. You could choose the name, but that means certain plugins have really challenging situations and how do we deal with that change? Good, excellent. Any other questions, piece from you or from, uh, for, or from Catherine? Um, if you go back to the sheet, uh, you can see the areas that I had highlighted in yellow. Um, those are the areas that I had queries in. Uh, the latest one, the latest edit. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this one, this one, and this one? Yes, there are, there are a couple of plugins that have, um, like, like uh, the first highlight, that have a similar repo, a GitHub repo to another plugin. Yes, very good and good observation. So here what we see is pipeline stage tags metadata, oddly enough, uses the same exact Git repository as two or three other plugins. 
And, and if you look at, if I remember correctly, it's the Blue Ocean plugin has a similar thing where it has multiple plugins delivered from a single repository. And usually that's because it made sense for the development of that plugin to, to develop, to place multiple plugins into a single repository because they were strongly connected to one another. In the case of pipeline stage tags metadata, I believe it's because it is a fundamental component of the Jenkins declarative pipeline. And the repository it's in is actually the Jenkins declarative pipeline uh, repository. So, so you're correct to say, hey, this is the same repo. Now, the, the other one that you note here, the handlebars repo, that's the same repo, but for a slightly different reason. This one is the, okay, so the handlebars plugin or the handlebars bundle, handlebars, what do you call it? JavaScript bundle is stored in this JS, JS Libs repository, along with an old copy of Bootstrap, Ace Editor, jQuery, Moment, and Numeral. So, so there are some of these several JavaScript libraries that are in a single repository. So all you have to do is visit those once. Okay, Mark. Uh, so uh, should they make one pull request per sub uh, directory or sub plugin or just one big for each repo? You know, either either would be fine. Okay. Either would be fine. If I'm hoping that this thing doesn't have many references to master, but I've never checked. Catherine, what was your experience? Was this one where you said, oh, there are a lot of places where it has inappropriate terminology? No, no. Um, the one that had a lot of issues we tackled it last time. Okay. Yeah. Great. Excellent. So yeah, so what you're, and, and you, I think you'll find the same thing in, in a number of other open source projects and in a number of commercial projects where sometimes the boundaries between repositories and things we're delivering are intentionally shuffled in order to make it easier for the development team to maintain that thing. By putting them all in one repository, in some cases, it makes it easier to make changes. Okay, I, that's okay. Then, um, because then that means the Moment JS plugin also shares the same repo as um, as the one that we had just opened. Yeah, it, it, and 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 I did notice it doesn't have the GitHub uh, link on the Jenkins website. Right, and I th I think if we look at Moment JS, we'll see that it's it's release. What would you call it? It's when was, yeah, the last, the last time it was released was six years ago. And this, these links are in general only updated when we do a new release. And we, we don't, in this case, need to release a new version of Moment.js. I hope not anyway. And, oh, and this is even declared as deprecated. I, I don't know the history of this particular module bundle. So Forgive me if I say something wrong, Daniel, or if I'm, I'm failing to cover history here correctly. Okay, that's okay. Those are most of the issues that I encountered. Thank you. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Okay, then maybe let's go forward on our, our agenda. Next item was the timeline. So the, the next events that are coming is May 19. I think it's May 19. Now I'm, I'm going, now I got to look at the, at the timeline. I believe it's next Monday is our, yeah, so May 19 is the, is the end of the, development phase. And that's beginning May 19th. We start the final final project report phase. And that lasts for two weeks. And in the final project report phase, what we what we need to do is each of you writes each each contributor writes their own report. 
And the Jenkins project writes a report. So the mentors write a report. And we need to, we'll post a, a blog post. We'll create a, a blog post highlighting the accomplishments. And then by the end date, which is, let's see, 19 plus, I think 14 days. So think end of May, you submit your, uh, you submit that final report to the She Code Africa organization. Likewise for us. Any questions on the, on that part of things? Um, I do have a question um, because from the sheet, it shows there's quite a number of plugins. Um, is, there, is it a requirement to complete all the ones that you assigned to us? Oh, no, 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 no. Not okay. even close, Catherine. Okay. No, 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 absolutely not. What, what we're going to do with this sheet, mm -hmm. what, what, what we will continue to do as a project with the sheet is we're going to use this to guide our efforts. So you've already done some looking to see if there were changes needed. So we now know we can skip over these. We'll, can, we'll use this sheet in an ongoing basis to do more work on these kinds of efforts. So no, no, you do not. I, I feel like you've done a great job. I would love for you to do even more before the end of the week, but my sense is there is no way did we ever expect that you would complete, well, let's look at the number, 1,800 repositories. No, 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 <laughs> never, never assumed anything like that. It was just, we'll work as many as we can we start with the most popular first and keep working down the list. Okay, I'll definitely try to cover as much as possible. Super. Now, I did get a question in a preceding meeting, are we allowed to continue doing this even after the project ends? And the answer is yes, absolutely. But we also understand that the project is intentionally for a specific time and it's funded so that you can afford the time to do it. We know that you've got lives outside of the Jenkins project and you've got work or school or family and we understand that but if you're able to continue we certainly welcome you to continue as well okay all right thank you hello hi Nafisa hello Mark. okay so, so um, my question is based on the report do we have to um, update our folders with the report with the final report Sorry, I missed that due like to audio. Have, so do we have to update what? Each participant has a folder on the Jenkins um, contribution. So do we have to update our final put um, report on our um, personal folders? Ah, and that good good question. All right. So so in general, no. So that, that's a so let me. Let me highlight what Nafisa is indicating. So in the projects folder that we had on, on Google Drive, we have an inclusive naming or we have an inclusive naming folder. We also had a people folder where for each of the participants, we put a folder for you. So Catherine's folder is here and um, pieces, pieces folder is right here. What Nafisa was asking is, do you need to update your copy of the document that we put there for convenience? The answer is no. That was just to help you as a, as a participant as you were organizing your thoughts. You're welcome to provide your summary separately. You're welcome to keep that private if you wish. You don't need to feel like you have to share your insights or comments publicly because if there was something that went really badly with the project or that you think I really need to say something very harsh about Mark Waite, you should be allowed to do that. And, and you go ahead and do that and submit it to She Code Africa privately. You don't have to put the, your final report into these folders. Nafisa, was that the Thank question you. you were asking? Yes, yes, that, that was my question. Thanks, thanks um, very much. The, go ahead. Um, on the, um, on the, the onboarding, I remember the, um, Zenob made a statement that we, the report should be made publish 
like oh, on okay. any platform. Okay, like well then you can she... publish it on Ash Node, Medium, like you can publish your reports, but make it public so that they can view it. Ah, oh, well, I okay. So, so if you would like to make it public, we've got a great, I, I had forgotten Zenob's guidance and she certainly is the one who would, who would be the more important one to listen to on that. If you would like to post it publicly and wouldn't mind posting it on the Jenkins blog, each of you all, I, I can, we could certainly do a session after the end of project to show you how to do a Jenkins blog post. You could also even, and maybe it's even easier. If you want something that's even easier to submit than a Jenkins blog post, you could post your report to community.jenkins.io because here it's it's as simple as writing a writing a text file. So if you're interested in post having a place to publish post publicly, this would be a great location to do it. So, so, peace. What did you? What does that sound reasonable? Did I address your question there? Yes, that was what um, Zenob said. Like we should um, post it. We should make a blog post about it, and then we will forward the link to the, to Decode Africa. Well, very good. So let's. I, I had forgotten that. So let's um, let's use. I would propose we use community.jenkins.io as the public location for your for your report because that lets you one it lets you embed pictures if you want you can insert graphs you can do you've certainly got text and it's easy text editing so it's it's far simpler to do a posting to community.jenkins.io than it is to do a new blog post on, on the jenkins.io doc site. Okay, um, please, can I ask a question, but it's not, um, it's not related to this, this particular topic, but it's something concerning the GitHub. Is there a way um, that we can, for example, the last time I commented on the, I made a comment on the Git of, on one of the Git of plugin. I made a mistake. I wanted to correct it before creating a pull request, but I am finding difficulty correcting it. I, I want to ask, is there a way we can correct mistake after making a comment, then we can go back and correct that comment before creating a pull request? So, so the answer is usually yes, and it, it depends on on what you what you mean by correct it. So, so is it okay if I bring something up to try to answer your question? Yes, please. Okay, so so let's take let's pick one of the one of the pull requests as we're going to borrow one as an example, and we'll, we're going to make things up about it. So, what if we pick this one? Okay, so here's a pull request, and I think what your is your question asking, hey, could I can I change this commit message? This rather than master use controller, is that what you're asking, or are you asking how to change some other part of the pull request? No, I mean this master already, this one, um, the commit I already made. Like I canceled master and used controller maybe i want to change that controller to main or something else without right. having to yes so i'm asking if there is a way it can be done and and there is the the typical way to do that is to just add another commit which makes the change so i i, I committed the first commit i did may have had a spelling error and the the simplest thing is submit another commit that fixes that spelling error. So that's that's the easy way, and that shows a history. Then the person who receives, who reviews the pull request may choose if they wish to do what's called a squash merge. And what that does is it takes your multiple commits and combines them into a single commit. So that you're all of your, well, in my case, I make many mistakes while I'm doing these things. 
And I squash merge because it hides all my stakes, all my mistakes into a single commit. Okay. So that's that's one way to do it. Now, now that's that's what I'd call the easy way to do it because you don't have to really change your workflow. You don't have to use exotic command line options and you don't even have to use command line Git. You can do all that from the GitHub UI. There is another way to do it if you're willing to bring out command line Git um, where you clone it locally and you do a, a Git commit minus minus amend. That's A-M-E-N-D, amend. And what it lets you do is rewrite the thing. And you can change the message, you can change the contents, but then in order to push it to GitHub, you have to use the very dangerous option, minus minus force. And I say very dangerous because it's destructive. So, so avoid the option minus minus force if you possibly can, but it's available. So there are those two ways to correct a mistake. The easy one, which, and I think should be the, almost in 99% of the cases, you should use the easy one, submit a new commit. The hard one is overwrite the commit and force it. And the, that one is dangerous because you can destroy things. So Peace, did that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, good question. And um, just so, so you understand the real life I've done serious damage by using force pushes to repositories. So, so be very careful, especially if you put the force option in a script. We've had episodes where we, we had really serious damage done to things because someone iterated over a bunch of repositories doing force, force pushes. So be, be very careful with the force option. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, you bet. Any other questions along those lines? Okay, so I'm going to go oh. back to the earlier on the final report. Sorry, Nafisa, I, I realize that, that this may be a perfect place for us to ask for your help on sharing with, with other the other projects in the She Code Africa Contributhon for Jenkins to ask them to do their their final reports to community.jenkins.io as well. Would you be willing to do that? Maybe we have you actually act as the first as the first example and create one that we can, we can say, hey, here's how it's done. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll be happily to do that. But I'll, I think I need more explanations on that. Do you mean I have to create a blog post of my own? and then post it on the community Jenkins um, blog, blog page. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is if, if you were to create a, a your, create the first beginnings of your, your final project report, and it could be pretty simple saying, hey, this is the beginning of, of a project report and put it on Jenkins.io, community.jenkins.io so that others see it. So post their public um, project reports to community.jenkins.io. Would you be okay with that? Yes, yes, I'll, I'll, I can do that. Thank you, thanks very much. Um, Mark, I have a question. Um, You'd mentioned about submitting the report, um, the article. You'd mentioned another option of, uh, I think, submitting it as documentation. Yeah, but yes. So there's there is another another way we could could submit it as as a blog post to www.jenkins.io. Uh, but that is more difficult because it requires that you write it. It's a GitHub pull request, must fit the ASCII doc, the ADOC format, et cetera. So is, is that what you were asking, Catherine, or did I misunderstand your question? Uh, yes, that's what I was asking. Is there a guide that someone can read because um, we are short of time? Uh, if someone wanted to try out an alternative to just see how it works. 
Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So there are, there's a contributing guide on Jenkins.io. Let's go there. And you can read the contributing guide and it talks about how do you create a blog post. So if we go to the contributing guide and adding a blog post, and I'll just embed this link into the document here. See the contributing guide for instructions. So it, it very much has instructions on how to do that. If you'd like to see what would it take to post a blog post to Jenkins.io? Okay, thank you. I'll check it out later. Great, thank you. Yes. Okay, and so now I have to admit for the Jenkins project report to submit to She Code Africa, I'll have to check with, with, with Zenob to see if she expects that one to be public or not. I assume not because we've got at least one participant where she hasn't, she hasn't actively participated for at least three weeks. And so I'm hesitant to say that publicly in a you know, big, but I'm gonna tell it to him privately saying, hey, one of the participants didn't participate. Okay, Mark to check. Good. Anything else on the final project report phase? Okay, so what happens in the last two weeks? Final project reports. And I assume She Code Africa will probably do a um, host a meetup of some sort or an online session to highlight the accomplishments, etc. But I'll I'll have to double check with Zenob on that. Okay, next, next point for me was reviewing progress to date and, and the sheet. Now, Catherine and Peace, I assume you're putting your pull requests into the sheet. Are there any that aren't in the sheet that we should be reviewing? So are there any that are missing from this sheet? Because we could also look at your GitHub history and try to grab them from there instead. None for me, all of them on the sheet. Okay, great. Yeah. And peace, likewise for you, are all of your pull requests on the sheet or would you be willing to put them on the sheet so we make sure we review them? Yes, they're all on the sheet. Perfect, excellent, thank you. All right, well, this, this is great. Any other topics before we conclude for today? Thanks. Oh, we've got the chat. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording.